Hi everybody, welcome to the Mommy Diaries. I hope that this video finds you well, and if you're not feeling too well, I hope that somehow this video can encourage you, uplift your spirits, um, and help you continue to move forward <laughs> for you know the new day that you have ahead of you with your children. Um, you know, just to be real, it's been pretty rough the last, I would say, several days. The last several days have been really, really difficult for my daughter, for me, where I'm being very tested in patience and in gentleness. And she's not doing anything that's out of the ordinary. She's just being a child. But I've been struggling intensely with gentleness and patience and um, I've been praying a lot and praying more out of like anxiety and more out of frustration I think and um, I just had like an epiphany tonight I know it was from the Holy Spirit that I needed to be reminded of something that I think can really bless you and help you too because it really blessed and helped me so my daughter has been not following our typical routine, you could say, about a good week or so now when it comes to going to sleep at night. And um, it hasn't been bad, but it's been really highlighted the last few days, along with me being tested in gentleness and patience with her the last few days and her, you know, acting out more. And I'm just tired. I'm tired. I'm exhausted. Um, I haven't really been enjoying my child and, um, you know, hoping that I won't be the same way the next day. Just kind of, you know, feeling like you're in a rut, not feeling so great. Anyway, not to make that long and lengthy, but, um, yeah. So tonight was one of those nights where, okay, we're like, well, let's push back her bedtime. Maybe that'll help. And it's 8.30, she goes to bed usually at 7, 7.30, it's 8.30, and she's still not asleep. And we tried putting her down at 8, and still not asleep, and we're with her, and we did our prayers, and now it's 9 o'clock. And I'm just like, what the heck? Like, why aren't you going to sleep? What is going on with you? Like, are you going through a developmental change, which could be true? Like, what is going on? Because <laughs> it's throwing my routine off <laughs> completely. And I remember this mom at church had said, routines, routines with our kids. Are they really for our kids or are they really for us? And I was like, ooh, that kind of stung a little bit, but you're right. You know, there's no there's no wrong in having a routine with our kids if it's healthy for them. But I think routines are really for us to some degree. I mean, you know, you don't want your bed to go to, your kid to go to bed like at ten o'clock at night every night necessarily. That's not healthy for a little a little child that's one or one and a half, but you get what I'm saying. Like routines can be good, but they can definitely be like an idol for us. And that's what I realized tonight. Like I just, I just heard it so clear. It just came to me that God had spoken to me on this matter when I was pregnant with our son. And it was on this specifically about being so self-sufficient. It was an adoration. And I, I tend to write down what I feel, you know, will come to my heart. And um, I felt like the Lord had spoken to my heart that, you know, when we thrive so much on routine, we're not allowing room for grace because we're starting to think that we can become so self-sufficient, thriving on this routine that we have created. Do you hear the pride in that? So anyway, it came to me that um, I forgot about that. And it just came to me, thrive on Jesus's grace versus thriving on Anna's routine. Thrive on his grace versus my routine. Um, and it just convicted me because it made me realize like, wow, like 
I'm acting out as an adult, being irritable and angry with my child because my routine is out of whack and I'm not submitting and surrendering to God's will for tonight, for this day, for this moment, for this hour, to just spend a little more extra time with her. You know, really, that's all it came down to. Spend a little extra time with her. And uh, it's okay. It's okay. You know, I may have to, you know, do things tomorrow. Or I may have to cook, you know, things tomorrow. Or, you know, I mean, even when I look at the time right now. And I still have time. That's that's the beauty of God's grace. Like, I, was, I came upstairs. I was like, oh... Like I haven't cleaned and reset the house yet. And oh, I haven't made my husband's lunch yet for tomorrow. Oh, <laughs> and look at this. Like it's not even that late and I'm making a video. And it's like, wow, look at God's grace when we just submit. We just submit and we let go of our control of what we think we can control. And we just submit to his grace. And we let his grace carry us versus our routines. Our routines can really be a huge downfall for us, I'm realizing. I forgot. I definitely forgot. And I'm glad that God reminded me again through this experience. <laughs> because routine, if that's all you're thriving on, it's eventually you're going to fall. And it's not going to feel very well like, like me. I fell tonight pretty hard. And I was just like... I was so lost, <laughs> like what's going on? And then that came to me, you know? We can't be thriving off routine, you guys, because if we do, when we do fall, it's gonna hurt and it's not gonna make sense and we're gonna be angry at everything, at the world, at our children, at our husbands, at whoever, because we're all out of whack because we haven't been connected to who in the first place. So with that said, I hope that um, my <laughs> experience can help you and give you food for thought in your own life if you're experiencing anxieties over different things and worries with your children or frustrations. And just to realize like God wants to come alongside you and all of that. If you don't feel like doing the dishes, invite God to help you with that. If you don't feel like, you know, doing all the laundry that I have to do that's in my kid's playpen right now. Invite God into that experience. Invite him into the mon mundane, boring, day-to-day -day life experiences. And when you do that, you're going to see a greater joy and a greater peace because you're inviting the Prince of Peace to be with you. In those moments where you have to serve your family, in those moments where you're tired, but you still have to get up and do what you have to do to, you know, keep the house in order. So, um, I don't think I need to prolong this anymore. I think this is enough, but I do hope that it blessed you in some way, that it can help you in some way to grow as a mom, uh, and especially to grow in your relationship with Jesus, with God. And um, one thing I'll, I'll end with is, I've said it in other videos, uh, I think only one video before about inviting Jesus and Mary into your motherhood. And uh, man, like, you know, it's easy to say, but it's hard. It's hard at times. And these last several days, I've been super challenged with, like I said, gentleness and patience. And two days when I really should have lost it with my temper, I invited Mary and I invited Jesus. And I just said, please love my children through me right now love them for me right now help me please be with me in this with my child and i handled it with such grace and self-control and i know it wasn't for me at all <laughs> i know it wasn't for me but i handled what should have really caused me to just lose it i handled it with such self-control and grace because God and Mary were with me and because I invited him to be with me, not because it was out of my own strength at all, but because of supernatural grace. So um, I encourage you, if you're struggling with your kids and something, 
you know, temper tantrums, they're little, you have 202, 303, um, your kid is just not wanting you to change your diaper, whatever it is for you, everybody has a different heart. I'm telling you, and I'll say it again, invite Jesus and Mary into it with you. It doesn't mean that it, it'll just stop whatever your kid is doing, but it will mean that God will give you the supernatural grace to get through that experience gracefully, gracefully. And um, that makes all the difference. There's no guilt afterward. Uh, the enemy loves us to feel guilty afterward and, you know, smack ourselves on the back, right? Like, ah, oh, look what you did today, mom. You should go to confession for this now because you were such a bad mom today, you know? There's no guilt after because God gave you that supernatural grace you needed. Um, it does take part of us to, you know, control our will too. Um, that is a for sure thing, you know? Uh, Self-control as best we can. But God carries the big, the biggest weight of it all, I really think. So if you find yourself in that situation, I just encourage you, invite them. Invite them in. Know your triggers, because I knew my trigger with my child. And once I felt just that little bit of anger just kind of boiling up in my chest, I was like, okay, I got to go put on her timeout now before I, I just blow up at her. I need to go to, like, you know diffuse myself uh and put on a timeout and go you know elsewhere for a moment so i can collect myself and it just that mixed with knowing my trigger asking mary and jesus to be with me it made such a difference so i encourage you know your triggers know what it is that your kid does that makes you boil and uh step away and bite mary and jesus and you're gonna be okay so Anyway, with that said, I hope that you're encouraged. And if you know someone that could be encouraged, share this with them. Maybe they need it too. Um, I hope that, uh, yeah, I hope that your motherhood experience can be continually enlightened by the graces of God and the goodness of God. And that in his good graces, your motherhood journey can um, can become more beautiful, more fruitful for you and for me. All right, God bless you. Good night.